Well, good afternoon again, everybody. And also, um, well, I, won't, I can't say all the good evenings and the good mornings, because actually, I think uh, with 111 countries watching, uh, it's impossible to capture all the different time zones in one statement. Um, so we have 111 countries until now. We, I, I admit we still don't have Greenland uh, watching. Uh, so if anyone knows anyone there, please remind them that they can join, the, join in on the MSF Scientific Day in South Asia on May the 27th. So they can still catch Scientific Day there. I think the map shows the distribution of our current countries joining. Um, I, I will also like just to mention that uh, Virginia from the University of Rosario was online and tweeting about mapping and the quality of streaming in Argentina. I just mentioned that because, again, this is the group that will host the first ever MSF Scientific Days in Argentina on September the 27th. And a final technological bit uh, is about the top tweet, which was actually still um, the... Burns, Burns' tweet of the adolescent drawing of a doctor. Uh, and so if anyone remembers that from yesterday, um, the doctor with dark sunglasses and a little bit uh, chubby, and Burn is still worried that this is actually reflecting people's image of him. So um, <laughs> now, um, yes, look, it's, it's, it's my privilege to wrap up two really fantastic days. Um, I think that obviously these days wouldn't happen without the contribution of an, an enormous number of people. So I obviously would like to say thank you to the speakers, the chairs, the delegates, the online audience, RSM digital and logistics team, the organizers in London, the editorial board and the volunteers. And I want to make a special thank you to Kim West. And I know she'll probably be hiding somewhere in the background and maybe not sitting down here. But um, uh, Kim is a, a specialist in research communications. And I think that this is uh, really, this day shows up, really, Kim's work at, it, at its best. Um, and has, uh, the fact that we are joined by so many people around the world is really a testament to that. So thank you very much to Kim. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, Biomed Central, PLOS Medicine, the Lancet, Lancet Global Health, F1000, Welcome Trust, and the, our media partner, SciDev.net. I thanked them yesterday, but let's just thank them again, because I think they are very important. <laughs> now, just to spend a few minutes summing up, and I'm particularly looking at today, um, I think it's worth saying, it's, and Sarah mentioned this briefly, that we have been asked, actually, why have we created this false distinction between medical research and innovation? Because yesterday was full of innovative uh, research, testing new, new approaches to gaining information, new, new treatments. And today, it's called Innovation Day, but it's all evaluated. You know, actually, there's real rigor being applied. And so, so why are we so why are we still talking about this? Why, especially when, as Peter said, we've always been innovating right from the start of MSF. And I think that uh, I think there are a few reasons for this. I mean, just to name a couple, I, I, I suppose the first is about the breadth of solutions. Um, the, the, the breadth of the challenges in, in the medical humanitarian domain are enormous. And, and of course, we need to look at we need to think as broadly as possible in terms of finding solutions not just the medics the medics but the logisticians everyone within the msf movement and outside the 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 the, the sterilizer look just an example of something that uh, i think leave a group of medics in the room they might not think about designing an entire new sterilizer we'll still be trying to find ways to live with what we have already and i think that it's again then it's not just about the solutions but the tools and the processes I would say that our focus on research is, is a lot around under, understanding disease and testing treatments, and rightly so. I think that uh, what we see today are reflections on the tools that we use, how we can improve the processes, for example, the, the, the thons, the makeathons, et cetera, and also ways of developing new products. So it's not just about what we get at the end, but it's a, about the how. And I think that this day has really highlighted some of the work we are doing around the process as well as the, the, uh, the treatments and the gaining of the information. I think that having this day has also helped in my opinion, improve the rigor of how we innovate. And I, I'm not just talking about evaluating innovations, but as we've heard many times, uh, a, a, an awareness of the ethics around humanitarian innovation. And it's been in some ways reassuring to, to see the, uh, the statements on each of the presentations uh, about, uh, about ethics oversight. Although maybe uh, we need to actually think about what Peter was saying, and I'll come back to that in a moment. 
Um, and then finally, just I, I would say that another reason for looking at innovation in a day like today is, of course, to, to encourage us to take risk, um, to present failure, to evaluate and to learn from it. And I think that's been well, we've been reminded of that by Robin, um, that actually that it, is, uh, it is necessary to, to take risk and it's okay to present. In fact, it's okay to, 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 take risk, to take risk and to fail, but we must share, we must learn from it. But I, I think that um, that's, I suppose, broadly speaking, why we've tried to have this day for the last few years. But I'd say that some, some of the impressions I have at the end of this go well beyond our, our plans when we started thinking about those days. I mean, so just, just looking at today, I mean, we're, we're seeing how developing a product and developing a process can happen at the same time. I mean, I think that many of the presentations today showed not just a, a reflection, we're, we're not just about developing a product, but at the same time, people were learning how to innovate and were learning, demonstrating and developing new ways to, to develop those products and sharing those lessons. So you kind of, you, we've, we're kind of getting both at the same time. And I think that's been a very, for me, a very interesting contribution from, from, from some of these presentations. We were asked the question, does MSF need to move upstream do we need to look early on in the development process? And I would say that it's clear that we're already doing that. I mean, when we look at the multiplex platform, it, MSF and humanitarian organizations are getting involved right at, at this, from the start of the development process. And again, that's a, a, a development which I think is reassuring to see. Be, beyond the talk about failure, I would say that another thing that I've noticed today is that is, I suppose, serendipity. I, some of these innovations Whilst innovating, we've actually learned things that we didn't expect to learn. We see from the MUAC uh, presentation that we actually find discrepancies in measurement of existing MUAC strips. That wasn't the intention of the study. So it's not just about failing. It's also learning things you don't expect to see. And maybe that, out, that, that broader focus of the innovation mindset allows you to do that. I would say the same for the, steri the sterilizer example, to learn that actually our current processes are not fit for process when you come to test a new innovation. It's great if we can learn those lessons whilst whilst innovating. But I think that the, I, I suppose one reflection that sticks in my mind is uh, uh, from, from Peter's presentation is about mindfulness, about responsible innovation that goes beyond signing off to say you've implemented that ethics framework that we were so proud about last year. And now we can see already the limitations because great if you can sign off to say, yes, I observed eth ethics. Does it stop there? Does our, does our engagement stop there? Can we then just say, we've done it, we can go to sleep now? Because I think what Peter pointed out is the long-term impact as well. Beyond the innovation now, are we thinking about the maintenance? Are we thinking about the waste that that produces afterwards? And then our fundamental relationships and how innovation can objectify our patients. We, can, we risk losing proximity. I think that the, when we think of the the innovation lens, in some ways, through that lens, everything is a problem to be solved. But where is the place of the patient in that? If we see everything as a problem, it, what is the patient? Are they the problem as well? And I think that, yes, of course, we need to innovate. It's not to say that we, we, we shouldn't innovate. We need to innovate. I think there are examples today. A decision support tool could be a life-saving intervention if you don't have a clinician. So we need to do it. And innovation makes us effective and it makes us efficient. But I think like, our, like Jamila Mahmoud reminded us yesterday and also as Peter said today, can we retain the fundamental human, humanism, the relation that is at the core of the humanitarian act? And can we keep that at the center and then give innovation its place to support and strengthen that humanitarian act?